Welcome back to my channel. This is the Rural Companion. I am Ashley, and in my last video, we went through how I create a yearly homeschool plan. Of course, this is the same day that I made that video, so yes, I'm wearing the same shirt. Um, but I thought I would keep going with this uh, video series right now before I forget, get distracted, move on with homeschool planning or whatnot, and not get back to sharing some more great information about our upcoming homeschool school year. So in my last video, I was sharing with you pretty much all of the book related things that we do. So we use a book for reading the Bible. We use a book for learning about missionaries. We use a book for our history and science curriculum. We use books for math and literature and poetry. So let's talk about the non-book things that we do in our school year because it's not all books. Now, Charlotte Mason education or method is very heavy in quality books, but we are also doing other things outside of the classroom. I guess it's the couches, really. It's our living room. <laughs> um, so some of the other things that we are doing, art. This year, we will not only be doing our typical, usual artist study per the Ambleside or Charlotte Mason recommendation of looking at a quality piece of art and studying it, studying about the artist, the time period, and then recreating that art uh, piece of art. We will also be doing an art uh, craft activity most weeks of our school year. This will be really fun as I've got some really fun books uh, based on the different civilizations that we will be studying. Um, so I think like one week we'll be actually building a Egyptian game. Um, I think we're also going to be doing um, like stone carving replicas or something like that. And I think it would just uh, tie in really nicely to our weekly learning. For music, we often do the Charlotte Mason uh, prescribed uh, method for listening to a piece of music in a similar style to the artist study. We would learn about the composer, the time period, similar pieces. We would be listening for instruments or moods, different things that the composer is trying to relate to us in the music that he or she has created, performed. Um, this year we will be adding music lessons outside of the home and I'm really excited for both of my kiddos. My oldest has done piano lessons inside our home for the past three years, which has been fabulous, but now she will be going to a different teacher um, to do voice lessons along with the piano. And my son or youngest will be doing guitar lessons. So I think this will be a really fun year of going somewhere to do lessons, each of them. Uh, I think they'll be back to back and so it'll just be a completely different experience. We also do a lot of field trips. Now last year while we were doing Route 66, and I'll link some of those videos up here and in the show notes below, but while we were doing the Route 66 curriculum that I had created, we actually traveled along the Oklahoma portion of historic Route 66. We visited some really fun places and had a lot of fun memories made. This school year, there are not as many field trips are related to our homeschool plan. Um, you know, we're a little far from Greece or Italy, so we're not going to be doing those, um, maybe quite as tailored to our curriculum. But some of the places that we will be visiting this upcoming school year are some art museums. We have one that is not too far from us that actually runs a program for the summer that is a free admission for everyone during the, I think it's the month of August, so we'll be doing that next month. Um, we will also be doing, um, doo -doo -doo, I think there's a couple history museums that we have, and I know that they touch on some of these older civilizations, so we should be able to tie the history museums more into our learning. Of course, we just have fun field trips, uh, going to new parks or playgrounds that we've never been to. Um, 
natural playgrounds like uh, there's a place down south of us that is just a beautiful creek system set up swimming hole that is just lovely so we'll probably add that to our list as well um, basically when we go out for a field trip our goal is to have fun and of course learn a little bit while we're there when my kiddos were little we did a regimented field trip Friday every week and we didn't have nearly as much schooling material to do throughout the week so we would always have a day out on Friday to do something fun and it was often the same few field trips on repeat as we had memberships we lived in the city we were able to do things over and over again and little kids don't really mind so now that we're the kids are getting older and we don't have as much, I don't know, consistent time for doing field trips. Those won't happen as often and they will be new each time that we go on them. Okay, another thing that we often do is audiobooks. I know it's a book, but we're listening to it instead of reading a physical paper copy. We often will do a book on my phone while we are traveling sometimes we'll get actual cds and then we also listen to adventures and odyssey episodes uh, again on an app on my phone and we'll just run that through the radio either in the car or the house so that we can just have a variety of fun i don't know options basically just a different way of receiving materials we also incorporate games into our school year. Uh, I think last year I had bought a, hmm, I'm looking at our game shelf because I'm trying to remember what it was, but I bought a game that talked about um, the elements. And I, let me just go grab that. Okay, it was the Science Ninjas Valance game. So it was kind of like chemistry and how you put elements together to make, new elements it's actually a really fun game last year we were working through um just the periodic table of elements as well as learning some of the uh uses for the elements how they go together and this one was just a fun way of reinforcing that not every game that we do is related to our school year but we do try to incorporate at least one or two new games every school year i did mention that i had gotten the color coup which is a sudoku in colors and it was beautiful just a wooden set with color balls and it is just a fun way to challenge your brain um that can so there are so many um podcasts and videos on game schooling and I think that can be an entire method of homeschooling by itself or it can just be something that you pull in to enhance or increase the learning of your homeschool year but definitely learning through hands-on play is high in our book. Oftentimes we will watch documentaries or YouTube videos. Last year we watched a documentary of the a tornado that had come through Oklahoma when my children were just babies um, and they don't remember the tornado. I do. My husband and I do. I was actually traveling that day trying to fly through uh, out of Oklahoma and a tornado came through and devastated a community that is about an hour from us now. Um, so the kids were able to watch that documentary and kind of just understand what the struggle was of dealing with a tornado and just the loss and the what all of that entails. The last thing that we try to incorporate that has nothing to do with books in our school year is online or computer work. The kids do a typing course. Um, most days of the week they will be doing typing. They of course just have some free time on either the computer or our iPad to work on music. So they create um, songs on the iPad or they'll play games on the computer. We do have a select list of things that the kids can do during like their free time on the computer. Um, as I do believe that spending time on technology is a benefit 
to kids that are growing up in this time frame. We don't have unlimited access to technology, um, but I think it's a great tool. And it's really important to learn things like how to use the mouse or how to open and close a window on your computer screen, um, how to search for something, or just those nuances that maybe we, we take for granted because we've grown up with technology. Um, and when my kiddos were little, I did not let them get on any sort of technology for the longest time. Um, and then we've slowly added it into our school day where they get about 15 minutes, give or take on the day, most days of the week. The final thing that we do online is an ASL class. Um, we will either watch YouTube videos or go to a class with our church and learn ASL American Sign Language. And I think that's been really important for the kids to learn as well. Now, we do a lot of books. We do a lot of hands-on things. Um, but something that we don't do in our homeschool is workbooks. That one just really has never had a huge place in our homeschool. And that's just something that we have chosen as a family not to use. Um, mainly because I think that the Charlotte Mason method encourages reading books and then discussing or writing or drawing what you have learned rather than filling in bubbles or answering uh, you know, simple sentence questions, uh, true and false, those types of things. So we don't use those. And we also don't do a ton of testing. That one probably will have to increase a little bit as the kids get closer to high school and we may incorporate like math tests or um, a few of those things. But like in the, the science and the history books that I have this year, they do offer testing and that's just not something that we will be doing. Okay, so those are the extras that we will be doing this upcoming school year. I would love to hear some of the fun field trips that your family loves to take, or if you have some recommended games or websites for education or just playing fun things, games for kids. And I would love to chat with you more about homeschooling. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.